he is a graduate from UCLA. So Pratik is the best guy to tell us about all about masters in the US. What's the entire process of applying for masters in the US? Uh, what was your factor for deciding UCLA as your final answer? Uh, I did not have any work experience. I did not have any savings. Uh, how was your mental state when you voted that flight to the USA that you know you're going to a new land? And how was that mental state? So welcome to our channel, Pratik. And Pratik is a software developer for Amazon Web Services in San Francisco Bay Area. He is a graduate from UCLA and he graduated with a master degree in computer science. And before that, he did his uh, undergrad from VESIT, which is basically a college under Mumbai University. So Pratik is the best guy to tell us about all about masters in the US. And he has also uh, created a Discord uh, server for people who are interested in pursuing MS in the USA. So we'll also talk about that. So welcome, Pratik. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Amisha. And it's, it's great to be here. Um, always a pleasure to talk to the audience and like tell them about my story as well as how they can use my experiences to um, better their like their their preparation in the future. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So what was your motivation behind thinking about pursuing MS in the USA? Because a lot of people don't even have a motivation clear that everyone is pursuing. So why not me? So what was your motivation? Yeah, yeah definitely. So it's, it's a great thing that you said, like, if everyone is pursuing, why not me? So luckily, I did not have that issue. Because when I was doing my undergrad, um, in the like first second year of undergrad, um, there were not many people doing this, to be honest, like in my in my uh, college. So it was kind of new. I had heard of uh, people applying for masters, they were they were giving GRE in other colleges, or like friends of friends or someone but no one in my first connections uh, was doing that. But given that I was like, always attracted by the US education and lifestyle. And like early on during my undergrad, um, I had realized that most of the advancements and the work that was happening in the CS domain was happening either in US or European universities. So, and based on that, I, I did my own return on investment research as well. Um, like basically once you uh, go for your masters, like what is the investment that you have to do? And uh, then what, is, like, what are the steps after you complete your graduation? What are the steps that you have to take to get that investment back, right? Because you don't want to be in a debt or like, for the rest of your life. So um, that was pretty solid. Like I could see that there was a huge uh, um, like motivation in that as well, like to do that because um, most of the companies or like even in research, uh, you kind of earn back the money that you invest uh, quite quite quickly uh, in, in the US or uh, sometimes in the Europe as well. So yeah, that was my major motivation. What's the entire process of applying for masters in the US? So yeah, like the first step that I did was give my GRE. Um, GRE is the graduate records exam, um, which is like a standardized test. Uh, and it was required uh, when I was doing it. Um, it is not required for many of the universities now. So you need to do your like research. If some university doesn't require it, uh, you can skip it. But in general, I would say that it's better to give because um, it actually adds value to your profile. Like even if it's not required, it does add, add value if you have a good score. So yeah, that's my recommendation. So I gave my GRE in the third year of my engineering and I like prepped for it for around like three months or so. And um, I, I was able to get a, a like good score, uh, which is like 320 plus is considered good score. So I got 323. Um, and then after doing that, I gave my TOEFL, which is a test of oral uh, proficiency uh, in English. So Usually, whenever you apply to a uni U.S. university, they would require you to fulfill some basic criteria for um, English proficiency. So TOEFL is one of the exams. Uh, some other exams were IELTS as well, uh, which I didn't give because it was mostly required in Canada if you wanted to go there. TOEFL is, unlike GRE, is not a way to for universities to judge you, but it's a basic criteria. So. Even if you pass the basic criteria, that's good enough, I would say. Uh, but yeah, like I I wanted to get better, like good marks as well. But uh, yeah, like it was, I got some 110 out of 120. Uh, so that was there. And then um, apart from that, GPA is something that is considered highly in, in um, like your application process, like your undergrad GPA. So I would I would suggest you to also look into maintaining your GPA as well. So yeah, all those things considered, um, I started applying for the uh, universities. And I applied to around nine universities, um, like 
there were man, many of them but the major thing that I, that i was suggested was to have buckets of universities basically have like ambitious universities moderate university uh, universities and safe universities and you need to have like a good balance between these so i had like three universities in each bucket kind of thing um and then basically the safe universities are like which you would kind of you know that you would kind of get in so having that uh, separation helped me a lot and then i got like admits from um north carolina state university um usc which is like the university of southern california it's in los angeles and ucla which was my final university which is university of california los angeles in that order so yeah like um, it was it was a it was a good good journey in in that way that i and ucla actually was my ambitious university so yeah like uh, i got my ambitious university as one of my admin uh, what was your factor for deciding ucla as your final answer it actually depends on individual basis um you need to come up with the criteria that you want out of your masters education um the criteria for me was uh, four things uh, first is the funding opportunities because i was right off of college uh, i did not have any work experience i did not have any savings uh, as such so funding opportunities was a big big uh, factor for me i would say uh, that i wanted to do my masters with as minimum uh, funding from my end required second was the location so for me location mattered a lot i wanted to go to california because um from seniors or like whoever i reached out to before everyone was working kind of on the west coast and most of the people had suggested that oh california is a good place to be if you want to um like do your internship or like be closer to the bay area something like that third was the batch size so like i have i have had experiences before in which like a larger batch size it was difficult to get any kind of help or um any kind of like opportunities in the future as well for example if there are like let's say the jobs are limited right like there are 10 jobs and there are 200 people competing for those 10 jobs versus there are 1000 people competing for those 10 jobs it's going to get very tricky if you are in the later part so i wanted to give a preference to batch size after a point you kind of understand that okay the ranking of the university and all those also matter but these are the things that will affect me directly the brand name and the alumni network does matter but up till a point so for example you might be able to uh, let's say if you go to mit right you might be able to give that introduction the beginning introduction that oh you are from mit you might be able to stand out of like a bunch of profiles but ultimately it's going to be your um, interview how it goes is what is going to decide if you are applying for a job uh, if you will get that job on how was your mental state when you boarded that flight to the usa that you know you are going to a new land and how was that mental state oh yeah, yeah so i was pretty nervous like there were many things that came to my mind i never lived alone before um everyone around me uh, was from a tier 1 college in india uh, with work experience who was going to ucla uh, which was kind of like a little like uh, uh daunting to me like oh how how am i going to cope up like will i be able to cope up uh, like all those things came to my mind um also apart from this there were like many uncertainties when i actually like started my journey uh, will i get uh, the scholarship part that i talked about like funding opportunities will i get those uh, will i get an internship uh, job what will happen if i don't get a job all those things came to my mind um but i think the main thing that helped me was not to look at it at a whole level uh, rather than that i just looked at it like i divided my uh, time into quarters and then just looked at it like okay like this quarter i want to get this done uh, first once i land there i'm going to just look for um, on campus opportunities and that's it like that's my entire goal in the first month and that's what really helped me uh, so yeah like look at it like break down your problem into small small problems and then also network a lot with your friends Uh, which helps a lot like i i can't stress enough like my friends uh, are the reason why it made my life easier like they they would be the ones who would be going into an unfamiliar territory and um, helping out each other like we kind of relied on each other a lot so yeah that really helped so uh, how did you cope up with say cultural shock or maybe homesickness and your study routine and finding internships or jobs along with your personal life so studying and everything how did you manage that yeah one of the things that i really like i i think that really helped me uh, and which i learned a lot during my masters uh, is time management so i really believe that everyone should know how to manage their time uh, irrespective of what you are doing 
um it really helped me by like following a routine um basically the day is i broke down my day into like parts um i stuck to it like stuck to a regular routine uh, when i was applying for an internship let's say i was like okay like from in the morning time like let's say 3 hours i'm free i am going to use those 3 hours to do some interview prep or do some uh, uh, lead code which is important for uh, computer science graduates like to find internships and stuff so you need to stick to that routine uh, and also given that you need at least like a day off in between to manage your mental state is what i feel everyone should try to do and, um and yeah like culture shock wise it wasn't like that much a culture shock for me personally because i had uh, grown up watching like television shows and all those things like it was kind of used to uh, for me but homesickness is real like i <laughs> i i al- always uh, thought okay like even if i decide to go back home for like a vacation or something it's first of all expensive it will take a lot of time um and yeah it's it's a, it's a lot but yeah like video calls and all those things really help what are you doing for the community to you know uh, help students who are preparing for masters and they want to pursue masters in the usa so can you explain about the initiative of yours sure yeah um so yeah like taking cues from my journey itself like how i was applying to universities um there was like a minimal or no support uh, for what to expect next like for example you would apply to a university right and then you don't have no idea okay what should i expect next until the university reaches back or is there anything i should do in this like in in the meantime uh, to better utilize my time um not just that once let's say you get an admit um i have no idea like i figured out most of the things after, like what to do after coming to the us on my own it was really mm. like going into an uncharted ter- territory um facing challenges learning from mistakes you would make mistakes if you are going into like unknown situation right like there can be mistakes you will learn from them you will make sure not to do them again or like create a better path forward so all these things happen and what we are trying to develop and grow is like create a community uh, for ms and us aspirants which not only will define a better path uh, for applying to the universities but once you are in the us there will be a network of alumnus as well as people who have gone through this exact same thing for example finding on campus opportunities internships mm-hmm. finding referrals for internships jobs immigration support and like what is it that you will expect and in general like all the things um, that can happen or you might not have thought about it in bef- like before but someone might have gone through it here so they mm-hmm. will be able to help you out so we trying to create a community in that way and um, yeah so the main advantage of this network is that these people have been through through these hoops themselves so there's no one like better to help you out and um, like gu- guide you in that terms so currently um, we have a discord server with i think more than 800 members and it's growing day by day so yeah like uh, that's something that we wanted to put out there uh, for creating this network and like helping out people also i have started like uh to be more active on twitter and share my personal knowledge in the form of twitter threads as well as like if you want to set up one one time with me i have a, like a top mate uh call service where you can set up individual time with me discuss any blockers confusions that you have about studying abroad in the us and i really hope that we can help out the next generation of students and professionals coming to the us yeah so it's great to hear that you know what you're doing for the community because not a lot of people will do that with a full time job so i think mm-hmm. that's commendable so definitely you can find out the links for the discord server uh, and for pratik's uh, top mate link where you can ask him anything so check out the links in the description so guys how did you like this video do tell me in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe because we have another part part 2 coming up where pratik will talk about his journey as to how he got a job after completing his masters and uh, how he joined amazon web services so for that part do stay tuned and subscribe to the channel till then bye bye hope you have a good day